Today we're gonna to talk about enterprise content marketing strategy. Siege Media is a 115 person content marketing agency. We work with a ton of great enterprise businesses such as Asana, Shutterfly, TripAdvisor, Zillow, et cetera. And through that work, we've learned a lot about how to get things done and when to know when to give up and go fight a different battle to actually accomplish your goals and grow these great enterprise businesses. <laughs> So our first overall suggestion is to create or establish a foothold from a content perspective for your team to own. So this was actually recently brought up to me by John Henry Shirk, very smart content marketer who's a partner at Growth Plays. And effectively, John Henry brought up the idea that effectively many content teams will run into roadblocks that are owned by other parts of enterprise organizations. Very often when you become a bigger company, you effectively can't touch a blog or a news section because there are people that own that. And if your goals don't tie to their goals, there will be some friction. They won't allow you to get things done, et cetera. So many times in an enterprise company, it almost could make sense for you to establish a new content foothold that's another part of the website. It still makes sense logically for that content, but to create ownership and less red tape to accomplish things, this can make sense for you. And even if you're not enterprise today, it might be worth thinking about this in the future. If you don't realize that there are these kind of like elbows being formed around certain sections of the website yet, very often this is a common dynamic at these bigger companies where there's stakeholders for each area. And from SEO, it is very often holistic, but at least from a content standpoint, a majority of your SEO driven content can live in one area that hopefully you have more authority over and an ability to get things done that drive results. Other aspects that are enterprise specific to consider is that there are many content things that have unique dependencies that you may wanna think of in advance or otherwise get in front of to make sure you're delivering in the highest quality and also maintaining your ability to deliver that over time. So some of the things that stand out is for sure you're gonna need dedicated and high quality content editors, also art directors as well. So Brands are built through care for what a brand is. And that comes through very rigorous brand guidelines and also art direction guidelines as well. So this is one reason we have copy editors and art directors at Siege, because we maintain a brand aesthetic and a voice for our clients that is only established through this work. So it is not as simple on a startup basis as just hiring a writer and then reviewing that as a marketing manager. You need people who are excellent at these things, that are great at them in order to not have it come back to bite you. Because eventually if you do things willy nilly, you'll find at least at very great brands, someone will wake up to this, they'll notice the great traffic you're generating and realize this makes no sense. Pepsi would never talk about soda in this way. We need to change this, we need to take it down. I've seen examples of even content getting vendors and other people fired because it was so off brand when it went live. So you need real editors and thought process around that. Another thing is also the CMS and making sure that it's very user-friendly and easy to use. We're, we still love WordPress. More people are using Contentful and speaking highly of it. Webflow is getting referenced more often as well. These are good things to think about upfront. In general, you can go fancy and try to do these unique solutions. You'll generally find that the more you do that, the more people that are gonna walk into your organization that don't know how to use these things, there's gonna be a learning curve, that's gonna create headache, or otherwise if you use your custom setup, that can cause its own bottlenecks and sometimes positive things as well. But in general, especially for the content section of your site, suggest going user-friendly. For most, most content just doesn't need a crazy experience if you're just trying to solve for true content marketing in that way. Other enterprise dynamics to consider is many of these businesses are very high authority. So you, you're generally also up against high authority competitors, but for this reason, there's gonna be a lot of red tape around PR. Very often there's gonna be PR teams that won't even want you doing outreach. They might have do not contact lists, et cetera. And also because you have such high authority, very often you can accomplish link generation simply through building an engine of doing that. So high quality content will perpetuate that high authority and do it even more. We like to think about it within Siege for these big companies, more how can we help you generate more passive links through more and more quality content and rankings, also thinking about topics that do that naturally to build that snowball rather than having to do the manual outreach 
that very often will either have red tape or simply doesn't dynamically make sense from an ROI standpoint because you can already rank for things passively as an overall business. There are some exceptions to this. Sometimes you might not even be able to get some of that content live on the site. That dynamic will be unique for content marketing. And we have clients who are enterprise and they have owners that are outside SEO that own a blog and we can even get content live on the blog for that reason and we'll create content off-site and promote it for links to generate outcomes for their SEO side of things. This is definitely non-ideal and we've said this to them as well, but within the, con the, the constraints that they have, it's the best that can be done and can still generate positive ROI. So that's one potential consideration if for whatever reason, you can't own that blog section within your own, your own company's website. Another common thought process I see within enterprise organizations is general passivity or lack of urgency around driving sales. You'll find many of these companies might not have attribution set up or might not be thoughtful, or in general, they're just kind of just trying to generate traffic up front. And many of them will generate a ton of traffic through the, the work and authority that they build, but they won't necessarily convert or they won't have that thought process. And you wanna have that as part of your DNA up front, I think, as a content marketing company, because eventually that comes back around. So you'll have someone come back around and ask those questions of your organization of what you're doing if it's not happening day one. So it might start positive of all this traffic you're generating, but if you're not really thinking of it thoughtfully, uh, it's definitely worth doing. So it's outside of the purview of this video to get into full details of how to do that, but check out our post on high converting content to get more detail on those kinds of things. And then finally, there's definitely some bias in here, but we'll definitely share both sides of the coin. In enterprise companies, more often than not, it can be beneficial to hire agencies. So it's very possible if you're working at an enterprise company, you're stuck in meetings all day, there's red tape to get things done, it's hard to actually find heads down time to accomplish anything. Very often you can't get head count. These are public companies that actually get graded and thought of on a revenue per employee basis. And this is part of the justification why many companies will actually use a lot of agencies because they're variable costs, they're not factoring into that equation and it works out positively in their benefit. So working with agencies can be positive to get things done, move the needle and be efficient in what you do. So some general tips of how to be most effective in doing that. First is to have a single person own the relationship. So ideally within the organization, a content marketing person, an SEO may hire someone like us very often, but you wanna have a brand leader first. I think having brand first people allows you to kind of have a flavor of that editor, the art director to give that voice to make sure you get the experts doing that in, in the best way. It also consolidates feedback within one person. Poorly ran companies or relationships will often throw feedback at a wall and not have a single person combine that feedback to relay it, which is not efficient, especially when there's a lot of stakeholders in the conversation that will all factor into those outcomes as well. In big companies as well, it's very important to find stakeholders and agencies who communicate in terms of ROI. ROI is gonna be important for you actually to justify that expense. These companies have multiple levels of bureaucracy and you'll have to, you might have a great idea and you know SEO is worth investing in, but if you can't communicate that in terms of dollars and cents, you're probably not gonna get your idea approved and move through the organization. So a lot of SEO at enterprise companies is effectively the business of SEO. So it would suggest doing that. Tom Critchlow is great. He actually has a course on getting your SEO MBA. It's effectively solving exactly this problem set of communicating that internally. But as you work with other agencies, make sure they align with you on that. It's gonna make your life a lot easier. And it'll make sure you know how to communicate the dollars and cents in order to create that outcome at the end of the day. And then finally, I really suggest carving out dedicated time for that person to manage the agency. So it's very common where someone will just realize, hey, we can hire agency and then we don't have to worry about the work. But the reality is it does take time and effort to make that relationship successful, evangelize what they're suggesting to you and help get it done. So carve out that time, ask them how much time you think you will need to manage them in order to be successful and make sure that occurs because we've been in a few too many relationships where the point of contact is actually not carving out time for someone to manage the relationship. And because of that, deadlines get pushed back. There is an ownership, things don't get accomplished. And that all contributes to a similar environment as you have currently within your enterprise organization. So that all kind of wraps up into some common best practices for enterprise SEO and content marketing. By no means do I think agency is the only way to go. If you have these all outlined within your own company, by all means, and are great at it, 
go that direction. I think if you can do content marketing and it's part of your DNA, it's a great thing to do. Very often, if it wasn't in your DNA from the start, it's very difficult to change a thousand person company to be that way several years later. So uh, hopefully these tips were valuable to you. I'd love to hear how you navigate enterprise content marketing strategy. Please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our post and our channel, and let us know what you thought in the comments below. Thanks for watching.